Welcome to the Daily Briefing from Interest.co.nz, I'm David Chaston. Today we check the second quarter trade price indexes, we also look at the latest risk premium update, preview Thursday's OCR decision, and we'll wrap up with what the other media are reporting. The relationship between the prices we receive for our exports and our imports is called the terms of trade. A high dollar, like we've had in the June quarter, makes imports cheaper and returns less for our exports. Today's data released by Statistics New Zealand on second quarter trade prices shows that on balance New Zealand has been getting more benefits from a lower cost of imports than we have foregone from a shrinking returns for our exports. This is probably a surprising result for some people. It's not the total story of course, but it is the story related to prices. In addition to this chart, which tracks the difference between these two price groups, we have set out the two individual price charts, one each for import prices and export prices, on our news page. Those separate charts clearly show that while prices for both imports and exports have been falling over the past year, import price declines have been way more than the fallen prices we have received for our exports. A high dollar has been a win for New Zealand overall. The past week has seen some serious movements in the pricing of benchmark yields. The US Treasury one-year note has fallen to about its lowest point since 2005, and that fall in sovereign yields have been matched by a similar fall in yields for the New Zealand government one-year notes. This is consistent with the global flight to quality we are seeing as investors seek safety more than yield at this time. More demand for sovereign issues means higher prices for this paper and lower yields. However, local swap rates have risen recently and are now back close to their high level point since we have been keeping these records. That means the local commercial risk portion of our premium is rising fast. It is now more than a third of the total premium, the highest we have seen at this decade. The market is pricing in widening premium for normal commercial activity. On Thursday this week, the Reserve Bank will announce the results of its latest assessment of the OCR. Reserve Bank Governor Alan Bollard is expected to leave the official cash rate on hold, with any concerns about the fallout from financial market ructions being offset by the continuing threat of inflation. 17 economic forecasters polled by Reuters this week were unanimous Bollard will keep the OCR unchanged at 8.25%. Financial market pricing, however, expects interest rates to be 50 basis points lower by this time next year, with a first cut penciled in for March. With mortgage rates above 9%, borrowers whose fixed rate loans are coming up for an interest rate reset face much higher costs. But economists note there are many factors which will hold up consumer spending. Labour markets are tight, the rest of the world is booming, and there are sure to be big spending promises in the lead up to next year's election. And that's not to mention the huge injection the dairy industry is making to the economy. Inflation is the main risk, and a lower exchange rate can change the picture fast. We won't see the effects show up for another month or two yet. So the OCR should stay on hold this Thursday. And finally today, a quick wrap-up of some other recent news. Spice's latest household saving indicators report shows that the net worth of the average household increased by $9,000 during the June quarter and reached $375,000, up $41,000 this year. Rising house values continue to drive growth in net worth. Building societies say they are in good health and want to emphasise that this, they are separate to the turmoil elsewhere in the finance sector. The government is responding to the global credit crunch by increasing the amount of Treasury bills for sale. Apparently they're considering raising the volume of bonds offered to the market as well. You can get more news and start with Newsmaker Views on our news page. Join us again tomorrow for the freshest finance news on the web. We'll see you then.